Exploring lakes, rivers, and reservoirs across the country with an unyielding goal to enlighten viewers from a fisheye perspective. Come along and we'll investigate the habitat. Much more than a fishing show, this is an eye-opening aquatic experience. Welcome to Kim Stricker's Hook and Look. The bulk movement of air, caused as its mass flows from high pressure to low, arises concurrently with the passing weather fronts of late autumn. The closer the high and low pressure areas are together, the stronger the pressure gradient and the stronger the winds. This blustery phenomenon occurs at a range of velocity and durations, suddenly appearing in short bursts, referred to as gusts or as a sustained air stream of gale force proportion. In addition, winds vary in direction, often making a sudden shift, altering current conditions. Considered an annoyance by most anglers, strong wind presents a challenge for lure presentation as well as boat control. Nonetheless, there are ways of coping with the wind and utilizing its effects to your angling advantage. Nice fish. Beautiful smallmouth. You know it, that's a dandy. All right. Steaming hot coffee. Mm -hmm. This is the day for it. Yeah. <laughs> Something hot, that's for sure. Hopefully it's gonna be a hot bite. Well, it's one way of finding out. Mm-hmm. The chilly temps of autumn have settled in across northern Michigan, and the weatherman's forecast is calling for increasing wind throughout the day. Most certainly a challenging prediction to most. Yet customary for hardcore smallmouth enthusiasts who pursue their favored fish this time of year. Kim Stricker's guest, Deep Blue Coffee founder Ben Wolf, is no stranger to inclement angling. For this entrepreneuring charter captain also owns and manages a diversity of fishing guide services in the Traverse City area. Ben doesn't hesitate to offer his optimism on today's blustery endeavor. I feel a good day coming here. It hasn't gotten a lot of pressure and... What do you expect for today? The hope would be for, for some numbers with some real good size mixed in. Uh, kind of suspect with this front that the numbers really won't be there, but there'll be some good size. Um, Do you expect them to be shallow? I, I would think so. I would think that they'd be in that 6 to 12 foot of zone. Nice little weed patch right there. Oh gosh, they're here. Gosh, he just, I saw him too. Six pounds? Yeah, it was, a, <laughs> it was not a little one. Come on, he's right on that dark spot right there. At least it's a sign. Oh, I can't believe he didn't get it. He smacked the slack out of my line. Sorry I didn't stick it, but we will eventually, even if we got a tube fish or something. We'll figure it out. Welcome to Hook and Look. I've gotta be honest, I was a little puzzled by the repeated miss strikes Ben and I were getting on a spinner bait. I mean, that wasn't the only miss fish, and it was getting a little frustrating. Oh, I just had a chase. Oh. Chases suck, Ben. We need to stick them. That don't do us any good. He's got a yawn and put that bait right in his mouth. Yeah, that's about it. All I can think is that maybe it was just a little too windy, so I decided to change up. I may try a tube just to see if they're there and they're not quite as aggressive because of the weather, I don't know. They ought to be all over the spinner, but you'd think. Right. You know, it could be, you know, one of those things where they're just now starting to come in with that sun. That's right. You know, getting up and... I'm gonna get back in here and grab a coffee tube. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Caught more fish in the fall up here on a tube than I have anything. There we go. Mm-hmm. Just like I said. 
Nice fish, dude. Real nice fish. But then again, every fish I hook is a real nice fish. Whoa. <laughs> Where's it going? Coffee tube. I'm telling you, that's, I've, I've said it a billion times. If there was any lure you gave me to fish for smallmouth, it'd be Strike King's coffee tube. Nice fish. Beautiful, Beautiful smallmouth. You know it. That's a dandy. We got a gut on that thing, huh? It's got to be. It's got to be the fronts that have gone through. I mean, this just feels like spinnerbait weather, but they're just not quite on it. Right. But we'll see what we can do. You know, maybe we'll still catch some on spinnerbait. But look at that. Fast. Eating. You know it. Love it. Right. Go on back, sweetheart. Thank you. If you like what you see on today's program, be sure to like us on Facebook as well. We'll be right back. Hook and Look is brought to you by Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. Humminbird, simply, clearly, better. Seagar, always the best. And by Boat U.S. Angler. Welcome back. Kim and his guest, Captain Ben Wolf, are running upwind in preparation for making another drift down the productive flat. This is typical fall fishing up here, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> you got that right. It ain't easy, but it's rewarding. That is true. When you stick one of them pigs. Oh, 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 oh I just missed one. <laughs> you just missed one? I just missed one. <laughs> and I got one. <laughs> and it feels like a good one. Awesome. Yeah, you just smoked it. It feels like a real good one. <laughs> As I said, it's rewarding, it's rewarding when, yeah. you, when you finally do get on Coffee tube. Come on aboard. Right in the net. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh -huh. They are fun. But you're right. They are probably eating crayfish down there. That's for sure. But just on those isolated sand grass spots. You'll have a bunch of sand and then sand grass. Woo! I like it. Mm -hmm. Fall, smallmouth fishing. Undoubtedly, fall is an extraordinary time of year to fish for smallmouth bass, despite the hit and miss weather patterns of the season. But why? What makes big autumn smallmouths so accessible and willing to take a lure? To help in our understanding, let's first comprehend their seasonal migration, beginning with the warming months of spring. Most experienced anglers recognize the spawning practice of smallmouth bass. In brief, smallmouth, after spending the cold winter months in a fairly lethargic state, begin their exodus towards shallow flats in an effort to proliferate as water temperatures approach the upper 50s. Once spawning is completed and the offspring matures and begins to disperse, most adult smallmouths then retreat towards deeper, cooler waters to reside, feeding on crayfish and transient baitfish schools. However, in the fall, a wonderful phenomenon occurs as the water temperature across the shallow flats begins to drop. Schools of suspended baitfish sense the approach of winter's onset and once again emerge from the depths to feed on zooplankton. In turn, yellow perch are drawn towards the buffet, followed by wolf packs of hungry smallmouth, targeting the forage fish as well as their favorite crustaceans. Go right between these two weed beds here. Yeah? Ought to be a fish on one of them, if not both of them. I'm sure there is. There's one. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. 
Right on that weed bed, right where she should have been. I see color. Ooh. Ooh. Nice pick. Yeah, that is a good one. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it. Beauty. Nice. Huh? Nicely done. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> love it, I love it. Right in cheek. Perfect. Gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Healthy, healthy. Talk about having to work for it, though, huh? I'm telling you. Some days you just got to grind it. Yeah, but I'm going to mark this weed bed right here. By the time I let this fish go, we'll be on our yard fest. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Coming up. Kim and Captain Ben share a few tips on navigating rough water. This should be interesting. Last night I posted a, a picture of Ben and I with a couple of nice smallmouth, and I got some viewer, viewer mail back uh, saying, while you're out there dealing with all that rough weather, would you show us how to run uh, a lake when it's rough like that? Because there, there are a lot of people with uh, bass boats, new boaters, that really don't know how to run this stuff, and that's a good point. Ben and I both have Ranger Z520s, which are a 20-foot bass boat. And, and I, I'm telling you, these lakes can shrink that boat really quick. When you get in a bass boat, they've got big motors, they can go fast, but that doesn't mean you have to use all of it. Just because you can go out, great, but you have to be able to come back safely, and that's the key. Right, and that's a point to make, is, is you got to keep a, an eye on that weather forecast to make sure you can get back. In the mor morning is it's going to be calmer, and that afternoon when that sun comes up, it, these lakes can get blowing. Right. Especially this time of year, and we sure had to deal with it this time. Life jackets, kill switch, all that stuff. All plays a part, guys. When it's rough like this and you have to cross a lake, the best thing is to run the truss. We'll do that right now. And we're carrying a lot of gear in this boat as well, so we got a full boat. Ooh. And you're gonna deal with that, you can thank me later. Now let's go into it. The main thing is to keep your bow up. Just take your time. I've got the motor trimmed all the way down right now. Right. But I'm keeping my bow up. And I can run it, there's no hurry. You don't want to fill your boat by taking something over. One of the hardest things to run is with the waves. Sometimes you have to. Again, the bigger the swell, the more that your bow's gonna wanna come down when you come over that. That's where reading a wave is really critical to learn how to drive up it, and coast down, so you're not spearing a wave. It's called spearing, and that's when your bow acts like a diving plane on a crankbait, and you're just gonna dig it right in there, and your boat will fill. Make sure you have a build pump. Make sure they work. It's good to have two bilge bumps, automatic one as well. Absolutely. Another important thing is to keep your hand on the throttle so you can adjust it accordingly, quickly. But right now, this is comfortable running with it. But if you, if, if you don't pay attention, you think you get too comfortable, all of a sudden you go over and swell, and you take it over the bow. How comfortable is it for you, Danny, on the camera up there? <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of the adventure. I need to point out that experience helps build self-assurance as a boat driver as well as confidence in your boat's performance under these adverse conditions. I asked Ranger Boats President Randy Hopper to add a few words in regards to boating safety as well as foam flotation. In the early 70s, a Safe Boating Act was just kind of getting formulated, and we were on the forefront of that. Uh, we actually built some boats for the U.S. Coast Guard to use from around the country to promote boating safety, and so from that, we took 
uh, that basis and built on that and we come up with our own flotation criteria which goes above and beyond what the Coast Guard mandates. But another thing that foam flotation does, and we don't necessarily rely on it, but it is definitely a part of the structure, it ties everything together. We like to say when you run the boat across the lake you get that one piece field and it feels like a fine instrument and it's not a bass drum. And that's really what it's all about. It, it gives you that assurance, it gives you the strength. You know, we don't go out looking for a storm to run in or we don't go out looking for bad conditions, but they do occur and it happens. And I think that having a legend behind you, like a Ranger boat and having, you know, 45 years of what we really put our best effort into making sure that you enjoy those days as much as you do the sunny days in their, in their own sort of way. So it's really a part of what we do and who we are. And in celebration of our 45th anniversary, I can't stress enough that uh, the, the things, the pillars that Forrest put into place at the very beginning are still alive and well at Ranger. And we're all about trying to deliver a product to the customer that, that offers a pride of ownership that's uh, unsurpassed. Stick around. The smallies start choking a spinner bait when Hook and Look returns. This portion of Hook and Look is brought to you by Power Pole. Swift, silent, secure. Deep Blue Coffee. Dive in. Ranger Boats. Still building legends, one at a time. And by Evinrude E-Tech. Power, performance, and 300 hours with no dealer scheduled maintenance. Typical of Michigan's fall climate, conditions are changing rapidly. Clouds now dominate the sky, and the strong winds have begun to subside a bit. Kim and his guest, Deep Blue Coffee founder, Captain Ben Wolf, have once again picked up their spinnerbait rods in hopes of provoking some aggressive strikes. I've noticed that you've got several blends of coffee, and, and I love the way you've named them, and they're all outdoorsy sure. names. But uh, tell, tell us something about that. Well, it started initially with my Traverse City Bass Blend. I worked with, you know, for six weeks to come up with that blend to try and get it right. You're not going to please everyone, but I think I came pretty close to pleasing most. And from there, we got so much attention it became apparent, hey, let's, let's start a coffee company, let's see where it goes, and let's start creating some additional blends. And so now we have 15, and um, you know, the feedback has been great, so. Yeah. Well, we least expect that one's gonna nail that spinner bait. Like right now? <laughs> Just like that. Just like that, good going, Ben. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Isn't that funny I just say that? <laughs> Good job. Fantastic. Oop. Pull that trailer hook out before I hook myself. There you go. Good job, Ben. Nice, healthy. Now, I mean, we've had to cover some water. Hopefully, I'm going to mark the spot. That's the beauty of having the GPS. It is. A nice, nice, solid chunk. Absolutely. Ain't that two gray spinner bait? Mm hmm. Good deal. Nice. So how many years have you been guiding up here? Well, I started full-time in 2009 with the initial guide service, which was for salmon and steelhead down in Manistee. And smallmouth has always been a passion. So we started fishing and guiding smallmouth in Traverse City area, which is just a world-class fishing. Yeah, what a great place to start. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> and. Uh, and then recently we, we launched a fly fishing guide service. Um, and you know, that's been taking off really well as, you know, just like everything else. So we've been very lucky to be booked just about every single day. That's, ooh, man, he slugged it. Ooh, ooh that's good. <laughs> like it. He just killed that thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Love it. Nice. Chunky. Mm-hmm. 
the main hook just nailed it. Got a little bit of the trailer hook too. Get it out of there. Oh, don't get that. There we go, good. Look how nice they are. Now that's, that's the tour grade painted blade spinner bait. And not only do you get the flash from the inside with silver and gold, but it gives a flash of color, the same color matched to the spinner bait. And it also comes with the trailer hook and the whole bit. There we be. There's nothing like the jolt of a charged up smallmouth as it smashes your spinner bait close to the boat. And it's at that split second you really depend on a fishing line with extraordinary knot and impact strength. This is where inferior lines characteristically fail. I rely on 20 pound Tatsu double structure fluorocarbon. It's capable of dealing with the sudden shock that these hard hitting fish impart. Thanks for tuning in today. If you're interested in fishing for Traverse City bass, lake trout, steelhead, salmon, or even carp, be sure to contact Captain Ben Wolf. He's sure to greet you with a smile and a steaming cup of deep blue coffee. Next week is a special treat for me when my daughter Katie joins us at Lake Okeechobee. Our friend, veteran tournament angler and professional guide, Tom Mann Jr., puts us on some hefty pigs that can't resist a Strike King rage toad. Daddy-daughter duo, next week on Hook and Look. Hook and Look is a Kim Stricker production.